بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا اللهم نور قلوبنا بعلمك واستعمل أبداننا لطاعتك ووفقنا لما تحب وترضى من القول والعمل والفعل والنية والهداء إنك على كل شيء قدير يا وهاب يا وهاب يا وهاب يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح يا جبار يا جبار يا جبار أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويوم يحشر أعداء الله إلى النار فهم يوزعون حتى إذا ما جاءوها شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا قالوا أنطقنا الله الذي أنطق كل شيء وهو خلقكم أول مرة وإليه ترجعون وما كنتم تستثيرون أن يشهد عليكم سمعكم ولا أبصاركم ولا جلودكم ولكن ظننتم أن الله لا يعلم كثيرا مما تعملون وذلكم ظنكم الذي ظننتم بربكم أرداكم فأصبحتم من الخاسرين فإن يصبروا فالنار مثوى لهم وإن يستعتبوا فما هم من المعتبين وقيضنا لهم قرناء فزينوا لهم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم وحق عليهم القول في أمم قد خلت من قبلهم من الجن والإنس إنهم كانوا خاسرين وقال الذين كفروا لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغوا فيه لعلكم تغلبون فلنذيقن الذين كفروا عذابا شديدا ولنجزينهم أسوأ الذي كانوا يعملون ذلك جزاء أعداء الله النار لهم فيها دار الخلد جزاء بما كانوا بآياتنا يجحدون صدق الله العظيم Respected elders and brothers, mothers and sisters, dear listeners Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Let us please come close together Inshallah, brothers in the back, in the lobby Make your way forward Sisters as well, encourage you inshallah to please sit together um, As much as possible And let us renew our intentions we're here only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all here to benefit from the book of Allah azza wa jal. We are here for the Qur'an to speak to us. Allah says, هَذَا كِتَابُنَا يَنْطِقُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّا كُنَّا نَسْتَنْسِخُ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ On the day of judgment, you'll be said, هَذَا كِتَابُنَا This book of ours is speaking against you in the most truthful manner. إِنَّا كُنَّا نَسْتَنْسِخُ Indeed, we used to write everything you used to do. So that day will come when the Qur'an will speak to you and I. Before that day comes, we'd rather present ourselves to the Qur'an in this world. And let the Qur'an do the talking and we listen so that tomorrow we don't have to suffer. Because Allah Azza wa Himself is saying the Qur'an will speak to us on the Day of Judgment. And as always, we should renew uh, our talab and our desire in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, you grant me uh, the best of both the worlds through the barakah of the Qur'an. Allow me to be able to find solutions to all the situations I'm dealing with and all the problems that I'm dealing with there most definitely the answers are in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we simply have to be able to find it. So with that sincerity, with that uh, zeal, all of us sit here and through your ikhlas and, sin- and sincerity of those who are present here and those who are listening online, uh, we ask Allah azza wa jal through the barakah of that, that whatever, we're being sh- whatever is being shared here, may these words go f- as far as the, where the sun rises and the sun sets. And wherever Allah azza wa jal has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation is alive, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our, the words from here to go to that deepest part of the world. And may it become a means of revival of Islam. May it become a means of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's prophecy being fulfilled. He said, لَيُبَلِّغَنَّ اللَّهُ هَذَا الدِّينَ مَا بَلَغَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ensure that this deen reaches wherever the night and the day come. And wherever the sun rises and the sun sets, this deen must reach there. So if you think about it, brothers, this is going to happen. Either you're going to be chosen and I'm going to be chosen to be the distributor or someone else is going to be, right? Because it's going to happen. So look how people are, fight for one another for distribution rights of something because they know a lot of money is to be made. We all should have this huge desire that we want to become the distributor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. 
and because Allah's deen will definitely flourish, will go all over the world. Who Allah will choose to be the, the distributor is in His hands. So each one of us should present ourselves to Allah. Ya Allah, please make me, make me from amongst those who will be chosen as your distributor. One of the things we learn from our teachers and mashayikh, that whenever a person speaks to a crowd or even small, even audience at home as well, wherever, every time when we, we speak, we should always be thinking and we should be making niyyah that, Ya Allah, I'm speaking in front of three people, two people, four people, five people. Guess what? It's definitely more than Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam speaking in front of an empty, vast desert. And Allah said, وَاذِنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ Proclaim amongst the people. There's no one there. Proclaim amongst the people for hajj. يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالَ They will come to you. Don't worry. رِجَالًا They will come walking. وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرْ And they will come from far off places on such animals that have become skinny and malnutrition, if you want to call it that, because of such a long journey. يَأْتِينَ مِن كُلِّ فَجْنَ عَمِيقٍ They're going to be coming from the deepest, furthest parts of the world. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he didn't say, Allah, but there's nobody sitting here. There's so few people. What's the point? Don't worry about it. The word, Allah will make your word reach wherever it needs to. So, so it's mentioned in books that at that time, that those who were not even alive, who were in the alam al-arwah, for those people for whom hajj was destined, they responded, la bayk, to the statement of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. This is the power of Allah, that Allah will take your words and He will propel it as far as He wants to. No sound system, no Bluetooth, no social media has an effect to the degree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without means can do. Yes, Allah Azza wa does with means, and Allah also does without means. But a person should have that belief that Hajjat al Wida, the Prophet sallallahu is speaking to 124,000 plus or minus Sahaba without any mic system. How are those Sahaba hearing it? And how is he saying, Those who are present here need to propagate it to those who are absent. And how is that khutbah, the last khutbah, word by word in almost every person's home, hanging there, somewhere or the other? How did this happen? You're speaking to 124,000 Sahaba, and there's no microphone system, there's no Bluetooth, there's no nothing, relay system. This is Allah Azza wa Jal's qudra. And let's take it one more step further. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, giving the bayan. In the middle of his khutbah, he says, Ya Sariya al-Jabala al-Jabala, O Sariya, look behind you, the mountain, the mountain. There's no Sariya radiallahu anhu sitting in front of him. He's giving a khutbah in Medina. Weeks or months later, the army comes back with Sariya radiallahu anhu as the head of this army. And they say, Amir al muminin on such and such day we were in the battlefield and the enemy was in, we, we thought in front, all of a sudden we were being ambushed from the back. And we would have definitely lost the battle and be, lost our lives if it wasn't for us he, somehow miraculously hearing your voice. That our Amir, Sariya heard Umar al-Khattab's voice hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away without any system of relaying, any type of radio broadcasting system. He clearly heard Amir al-Mu'mineen saying, Oh Sariya, look behind, the mountain, look behind you, look towards the mountain, look towards the mountain. And sure enough, when he turned around, he saw that the enemy was coming from behind to ambush us. Alhamdulillah, we got alerted. And Allah has granted us victory. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beloved brothers, it's so important to reflect on this. Because cyber, you know, we have cyber warfare going on. You have all sorts of attacks that are going on. And people's, you know, electricity being shut. Uh, communications being shut. Internet being shut. Allah is showing us that if you just depend on the means, you're going to be in big trouble. Because we're seeing with our own eyes what means are doing. Means are being pulled out. If you depend on means, you're not going to last. You depend only on Allah and you use your means as long as you have it. And if the enemy takes it away, guess what? We were never banking on them in the first place. We banked on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's amr. We banked on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. And that yaqeen is what is needed today to survive. The tests are only getting started. The challenges are only increasing. Every week we come with a new challenge across the globe and in our own homes. And our conviction in Allah Azza wa Jal has to remain firm. Allahu Akbar. Where today every gathering I go, I get asked, Shaykh, does Allah still exist? What's happening in Gaza? Where's Allah? If, he, if, if all the stuff you're saying, nice and dandy, but how come Allah is allowing this to happen? Where is, yani, what? If this is the iman of us, honestly, how can you expect Allah's help? If this, this type of question can arise, these type of statements can come. Recently I was speaking to the youth. I said, SubhanAllah, you should ask, don't ask how is, where is Allah's help? You should ask yourself, how come we're not destroyed? How, why do we deserve to live? 
What have you and I done to deserve to have three meals today? And to sit here comfortably in this beautiful environment and listen. Why didn't Allah Azzawajal knock us out today? That's a question. That why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being so forbearing? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being kind to us because we deserve it? Or is this part of istidraj? Is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply letting us, letting the noose loose, letting the noose loose until we think we're relaxed and then Allah pulls the noose around our necks. Al-A'yadhu Billah. The question is, what, what have we changed as one year? We are coming to the one year anniversary this week, right? In one week's time, October 7th. What changes have come into my life since then? What changes have come into my spouse's life, my children's life, my siblings' life, my cousin's life? The way I do business, the way I spend, the way I spend my weekends, the way I spend my money. What changes this one year has brought in my life? That's the serious question. And once, we, if, once you figure that out, then we can move on to everything else. Allah Azza wa Jal, and I repeat last week as well, right after the talk, a brother messaged me and said, oh, their brother's losing his iman. What well, can you give an answer to this? I said, just listen to the first five minutes of the talk that I gave. And subhanAllah, I wasn't thinking about that right now as I started speaking. But I know in every gathering that someone's got this question. What's going on? And Allah Azza wa Jal, just reflect on the sunnah and the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu There's no one more beloved to Allah than his Habib Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one. Not the people of Lebanon, not the people of Gaza, not the people of India, not the people of Kashmir, not the people of Afghanistan, not the people of Syria, not the people of the past, not the people of today, not the people of tomorrow. No one can match the Prophet ﷺ. No angel, no jinn, no human being. That is our aqidah, that is our belief. But when you study the Rasulullah's life, even very superficially, you all know from among seven children, the Prophet ﷺ had to witness the death of six of them. And I was personally involved in the burial of almost all of them, immediately or soon after. There's nothing more powerful and painful for a father or a mother to carry the, the body of their dead son or daughter. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ had to do not once, not twice. Not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times. And not out of six out of sixty, six out of seven. Six out of seven. Compare the ummah's grief with the Prophet ﷺ's grief. And you have a crisis of famine that's happening in the past year. Certain areas past two years, certain areas past ten years. The Prophet ﷺ from beginning to end, from the time in Mecca, as soon as he starts proclaiming the shahada, already the boycott begins. Already, way before even Medina arrived, within Mecca, the type of difficulty from the very first day, not only him, but anyone who's attached to him. The Prophet ﷺ is walking by Ammar ibn Yasser's home, and he sees them all, one by one, being tortured. Just yesterday, they were completely fine. Today, each one is being tortured. And all he has to say at that time is, Sabran ya ala Yasir, fa jannah. O family of Yasir, be patient. I'm gonna meet you in paradise. That's all he has to say. There's nothing more I can tell you. What can I say? I can't tell you to forsake Islam. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to beat these enemies. And they're being physically tortured. Until you know, his mother, Yasir's mother, Sumayya radiallahu anha is the very first one. Shuhada, from the first martyr of deen, a lady. Yes, the first one who gave her life for Islam was a lady. But this is how from the very get-go, it was a full shake-up. All the way till Medina. All the way till the day the Prophet ﷺ passes away, what happens? His sword and his shield are left in collateral at the hands of a Yahudi. Because he does not have enough money for his own home. So what happens? He doesn't want to take a loan from his Sahaba. He doesn't want to take a loan from his Sahaba. Ya Rasulullah, how can we give you a loan? We'll give you our wife, we'll give you our kids, we'll give you ourselves, we'll give you our everything. How can I give you a loan? He didn't want to put any pressure on, on his companions. So he takes his sword and his, and his shield and he gives it to a Jewish person. And he takes a loan from him. This is how he passes away. There's no, there's no section of that life where the Prophet ﷺ is living it up, enjoying it. So our Nabi, who we firmly believe is the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more, more, more blessed than the Arsh, the Kursi, and the Kaaba, Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, Israel, and everyone in, after them, if he had to go through so much difficulty, then why up is a person should now be doubting Allah's existence, a'udhu billah, if he sees what's happening? It's because we haven't understood the deen. We haven't understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We haven't understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom, how He does things. We haven't understood the relationship of this world to the next. The Prophet sallallahu says, لو كانت الدنيا تعديل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ماء If this entire dunya were to be equal to a wing of a mosquito, a wing of a mosquito, Allah azza wa jal would not have given one disbeliever not a glass, not a jug, not even a sip from a cup of water. Not even one sip. Allah Azza wa Jalla made every single disbeliever suffer a miserable life and a miserable death. Not one glass, one gulp of water. But the fact that Allah is giving the disbelievers even more endlessly 
uh, you know, endless amounts of power and strength and, and everything else, that tells you and I that in the eyes of Allah, this dunya is zero, zilch, it's negative, it's nothing. And it's the system of Allah from day one that the Sahaba had the least amount of things. Rasulullah has the least amount of things. What happens? When Umar al-Khattab enters the Prophet ﷺ's house after multiple tries and he's being denied when he separated himself from his wives, the Surah Tahrim that we talked about, he eventually enters the Prophet ﷺ's got nothing in his home, nothing, a bear. And he is lying down on the floor. When he sees Umar radiallahu and he sits up, Umar radiallahu looks at his back and he sees there are marks of the straw mat and he gets emotional. He says, Ya Rasulullah, what's going on? He's looking at his home. He says, this is, this is the home of Rasulullah sallallahu where, where is everything? Where are the goods? Where, where are the basic necessities of what we call of a home? And instead of that, there is instead such a, such a difficult place to sleep. No nice pillow, no nice cushion that the straw mat is leaving big, massive, you know, lines on the Prophet's back. And the Prophet Umar gets emotional and says, Why is this? What's going on? Ya Rasulullah, Qaisar and Kisra, and all of them, they have so much. And what's, what's going on over here? What's going on? And the Prophet ﷺ's very famous statement, Oh, oh son of Khattab, are you still in doubt? What are you talking about? What kind of question is this? What kind of question is this? Why are you comparing us to what the kuffar have? Why are you comparing what the Nabi's house with the house of the Roman Emperor and the Persian Emperor? There is no comparison. Yes, they have a thousand years worth of, of looted things. And your Nabi has got nothing. Your Nabi has got nothing. But subhanAllah, understand that Allah Azawajal has divided it up. Allah gave them dunya and Allah gave us akhirah. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them dunya and akhirah is ours. You just gotta be patient. And you'll see what's gonna happen. So this is, those initial days of Makkah and Medina are not what was just, yani, that's it, the mujahada was over. No! The Prophet's entire life in Medina was difficult. We say, Madani door huh? The Medina door. Well, the Medina door was that the Prophet was eating, you know, chicken karai and gosh and what? No, man. The Prophet passed away without eating bread and rice, bread and meat together on the same day. Never happened. Never. And the Prophet ﷺ routinely till the very end, he would routinely go into his home and would ask Aisha radiallahu anything to eat or one of his wives. If there was something he would eat and if there wasn't, he would just say, إِذَنْ أَنَا صَائِمْ I'm just gonna fast. That's how his ending came. And that's why Aisha radiallahu says the first bid'ah, the first bid'ah to come into this ummah was to have more than one food item while eating. To have one, more than one food item. If you got fries, think about that. If you got fries, you got fries. If you, got, if you got burgers, there's too many things. Six items in there, seven items, all the toppings. Subhanallah. One item, the Prophet ﷺ says, Ni'mal idam wal khal. One of the best salan, the best gravy is what? Vinegar. That house that has vinegar in it is not a hungry home. Think about that. If your wife, you go home and she says, Yeah, we got vinegar today for salan. Oof. Right? Look at how that's the bid'ah that has come into my home, your home. Right? Every single home. Imagine a person goes to a wedding today and he's got four items biryani, nahari, uh, what you call is it one fish item and one chicken item. What are they gonna say? Eh, not carding, yeah? They're gonna say, Astaghfirullah alazim. Look at this guy, I can't believe it. He invited us to a banquet hall to serve us only four dishes and only one dessert. You have to have at least 12 items. You have to have at least nine items. You have to have at least 10 desserts. And on top of that, taking loans for it. And on top of that, being indebted. And on top of that, already crushed in loans, you're taking more loans. Why? Because what are the people gonna say? Honestly, Allahu Akbar, we, we, Allah is Halim, that's why He's letting us go. The type of nonsense our community is involved in, while the Ummah is suffering over there, without anything, and here we are trying to impress one another. Impress, Allahu Alam, who we're trying to impress. In the process of that, getting deeper and deeper into loans, and so, so much israf, wasted, extravagance, which doesn't stop. And then we wonder, why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help coming? Brother, Allah will do something. If you do something, what have I done? I don't speak to you, I speak to myself. What has happened since October 7th of 2023 till now? What, what changes have come into my life? Ask yourself, have you become a little bit more simpler? Have you started giving, you know, spending less on these extravagant things and started giving in the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When those changes will be made, then you can say, Ya Allah, I did this for you. I did this for you. I did this for you. Please, Ya Allah, help the people of Gaza. Ya Allah, please help the people of Lebanon. Oh, Allah, help the people of Sham. I can say something. But if I've got nothing, if I, got, if I haven't done anything for Allah Azza wa Jal, to just sit there and say, where are you, where are you, Allah? Where are you? Inna lillahi wa The Prophet ﷺ in the night of Badr, he spent the entire night in dua after being the Nabi of Allah. 
after being the Nabi of Allah. Then he said this statement, in tuhlik hadhi al-isaba, in tuhlik hadhi al-isaba, falan tu'abad fil ardi abada, wa kama salam, oh Allah, if this group of my army, 313 people, if they get destroyed today, then you might not be worshipped again. Oof. He said that after what? After decade, a decade and a half almost of sacrifice. All night dua, until Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu had to come and, and say, bas, Ya Rasulullah, enough. Enough! You need rest. Tomorrow is a big day. You really have proven your point to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I have to ask myself, have I proven my point to Allah? Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm screaming at myself right now. You know, honestly, just may Allah forgive me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We have done such a, such a poor job of, 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 of really, you know, crocodile tears. Crocodile tears. We feel, we say we care about the ummah. We say we care about those who are overseas. But when it comes to my own life, what changes have I made? And if those changes are not made, how can I expect any, anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nusra and help doesn't come by slogans. Nusra and help doesn't come by waving a flag. Nusra and help doesn't come by burning tires. Nusra and help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes through sifat, through attributes, through qualities. When those qualities come into our life, then you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about assistance. Where did we start off this discussion today? SubhanAllah, where it went? The idea that Allah azza wa jal, He is ma fawq al-asbab. He works with means, without means, and against means. Our eyes should not be focused on the lessing of means. That, Ya Allah, we don't have this. If you're gonna read what the armies have, you will not be able to do anything. If you see what others who are, what, what type of artillery, what type of guns, what type of bombs, what type of Allah alam are being used to do to, to, to December and, 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 and December and kill and you know, melt our innocent brothers and sisters. It's very depressing. But we have something that they don't have. We have something called Iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَعْلَمُونَ Indeed, don't think you're the only one suffering here. Indeed, they're suffering the way you suffer as well. But there's a big difference. وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ You have expectations from Allah while they've got nothing to accept, expect except for hellfire. Nothing to expect except for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is such an important point for us in our home to constantly do mudhakara and discussion about the promises of Allah, about the unseen help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, roll up your sleeves and get ready. This is the end is, 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 is yani, this isn't the beginning of the end. Lots of challenges are gonna come. This is not, should not become as a shock. I'm not some big prophesizer. I'm just telling you what the hadith says. And you know what I'm saying is true. The Prophet ﷺ has already warned us of every era being more difficult than the previous era. Every challenge being more difficult than the previous one. And if you are gonna cave in now, then imagine what your kids will do. Imagine what your grandkids will do. Will they even be able to even retain their Islam? This is not the time to cave in. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to get depressed. This is the time to roll up our sleeves and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use all the means available, but at the same time we have to say, until I don't cut out 100% sin from my life, until I don't stop watching haram, listening to haram, speaking haram, harboring grudges and hatred, spending in haram, spending in israf, make tawbah from extravagance, make tawbah from extravagance, make tawbah from riba, make tawbah from show, make tawbah from ostentation, Make Tawbah from cheating and lying in business. Until we do not make Tawbah from these things, we cannot expect the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come. And remember one thing, Allah azza wa yuhsharun ala niyatim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise people on the day of judgment based on their intentions. So a punishment may come, a flood may come and knock out thousands of people. A bomb may come and kill thousands of people. But remember, each person will wake up in a different manner. Everyone will wake up in a different manner on the day of judgment. So, just like the women of Gaza, today, to today are going to sleep every single night, tidying up, tightening up their jilbabs and their scarves. Because they don't know if they're going to see dusk. They don't know if they're going to see dawn. They don't know if they're going to see dawn or fajr. And so they want to make sure that if they don't wake up, that their body is f- fully wrapped up. And they, they want to make sure that they're, they're not losing their hayat. They say, as though they're saying, we may lose our life, for the sake of Allah, but we're not going to allow the enemy to take away our haya. So I ask myself, you ask myself, every single night brothers, we got to go ready. We have to be ready. We have to be ready that if this is my last night, I'm ready. Tomorrow is my last day, I'm ready. Have I spent my day in such a manner that I'm proud to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya Allah, alhamdulillah, I spent my day beautifully. I'm ready to meet you. This is the question each one of us has to ask. I promise you the people of Gaza, they're ready. Every day they're ready. Every night they're ready. And they're saying, Ya Allah, it's, did you not see those amazing clips of these women 
who've lost every single male member of the family. Some of them lost four sons. And in the process of grieving, they're saying, Insha'Allah, we're also very soon gonna join the ranks of our sons. Who says that? The only one who can say that is the one who knows they're on the right path. They know that they're not committing haram. The guy who commits haram, the lady who commits haram, how would she ever say that? How, why would she, after losing four sons, do you say that insha'Allah I'm gonna join the ranks of my sons? That you're able to say with such conviction because you know you're leading a life free of haram. This is what the call is right now for all of us. We have to immediately repent from haram and do lots and lots and lots of istighfar. Collectively, my dear friends, millions of istighfar, all of us, on behalf of ourselves and behalf of the ummah. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, do not judge us based on what we deserve. Do not punish us based on our actions. Instead, we seek forgiveness for you for what has happened in the past. And we make a firm resolve that the future is going to be better. Beloved brothers, have hope, have hope, have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant victory to the, to the people of Haq. And that victory may become Astaghfirullah. The type of statements I hear, I, get, I, I tremble. When I told, we know that Allah Azza wa Jal, He will give us success in the Akhirah, for sure. And maybe in the dunya. The answer some people with weakest iman say, oh, so this is how it works, huh? We only get an Akhirah, we got nothing in the dunya. I mean, whoa, thank God, thank Allah, you were not born during the time of the Prophet. Ask yourself, would you be with uh, Abu Bakr or Abu Jahl? If this is your statement. You want the box. You want the arms, you want the kingdom, right now, cash, right now. Otherwise, I'm out. That's exactly what the kuffar wanted. The kuffar is like, we have the power, we have the money. Why are we going to join you? You're poor. You don't have stuff. We don't want to join you. So ask yourself if this is a person's attitude. That, oh, we don't, where's our dunya? How come we're always, you know, having to pay the price? How come we're always suffering? How come Islam is always suffering? You know, how come no one else? Then imagine if you were born during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, which camp would you be on? Because the camp of the Prophet ﷺ was a camp that go th went through difficulty. A man comes and says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. The Prophet says, watch your words. Watch your words. Ya Rasulullah, I love you. Watch your words. Ya Rasulullah, I love you. What, you sure? Okay. If you really say you love me, then be prepared for poverty to come down towards you just like something comes downstream. Something comes downstream. If you're, end, uh, if you're waiting at the downstream, there's no, uh, there's no doubt that the log is going to come towards you. So he told them, get ready for poverty. You, gotta get, you cannot say that, you know, subhanAllah, I want to eat the cake and have the cake. If you want to love the deen and you want to stand up for Islam, then be prepared to lose money. Be prepared to lose jobs. Be prepared to lose position. Be prepared to lose luxury. My dear brothers, I'm going to do the real talk that very few people are willing to do. And that's a talk every father should have with his son and daughter. Every wife should have with her husband. That are you prepared? Are you prepared to lower your standard of living? Are you prepared to have to maybe lose your job and do uh, you know, random things? Are you prepared to have to move to a different place? Are you prepared to have to make huge sacrifices? Because that's what is going to be asked from everyone. Whoever is going to want to remain firm on the deen, you will be asked for sacrifice. And this is the, the honest to God truth. And sooner or later, and that's exactly, mashallah, the people in the East are saying, we're ready. We're ready. Not one of them is saying, get us an airplane, we want to leave. No one. I haven't heard one yet. They said, if this is where it is, even a seven-year-old speaks like this. A six-year-old, he stands up and he says, I'm not leaving. Subhanallah. So we need to be invigorated by the iman of not only the sahaba, but the iman of the people of that region, of Sham, Bilad Sham. And all those stories and hadith that you've been listening to growing up, a lot of that is coming up in front of you. Does it say, I'm going to say Dajjal is tomorrow and Mahdi is coming? No, I'm not saying any of that stuff. We don't know. These things take long. But I'm just trying to say is that who would have thought? I remember one brother reminded me, October 7th, Fajr Salah. I was in St. Louis. We were there in, in a program. And it was early morning. I hadn't slept much night. I, was, I had a late night with some brothers there. We had it some home. Two hours probably I slept. And then I was at Fajr Salah giving a talk. On the way to Fajr, I saw what happened. And after Fajr, I said, brothers, a major incident has happened. I, whatever talk I was, but I brought this in. And I said, I just have a fear that the world is never going to be the same place after this. The people listening, they were rubbing their eyes, they had no idea what I'm talking about. Most of them at least, who hadn't checked the news. But subhanAllah, 
now it rings one year, one year and that's, those words are so true. Right? I, how I, I forgot about this until recently someone reminded me. He said, I was in that Fajr talk. And you said that and honestly, subhanAllah, what has the world become today? So we don't know what's going to happen, right? This, what, what has just happened this week? What just happened today? Our just constant ex- escalation. My point of sharing all of this at the beginning of today's tafsir is the fact that every single one of us has to be prepared for sacrifice. And if you're not, then you're in a, you need to really go check your iman. You need to figure out how long are you going to last. This is a marathon. This is not a short sprint. It's a long marathon. And in this marathon, you'll need resilience. And you will need to be able to stay strong. And the only way a person will be able to make it out through this is through extreme conviction in the power of Allah. Especially iman bil ghayb, Belief in the unseen. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant me and all of us that level of yaqeen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khashiyatika ma tahulu bayna bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asik wa min ta'atika ma tabalyuguna bihi jannatika wa min al-yaqeeni ma tuhawwinu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya Oh Allah, grant us such yaqeen that will become a means of making the difficulties of this world easy upon us. What a dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Allahu Akbar. Oh Allah, I ask you for such yaqeen that will become a means of in making the difficulties of this world easy. That's what's happening in Gaza. How are they able? You're like, is this, are you real? Are you fake? What is this? How do you handle this? The reason is because they have yaqeen. Yaqeen. That you don't get perked with a thorn without it being written by Allah. You think you're gonna suffer like this without getting Jannah? They have that conviction. And that conviction is which allows them to clench their teeth and says, bring it on. Whatever it is, we're ready for it. SubhanAllah. And I'm not ready for uh, get my blood taken out and get scared. And here you have these people, SubhanAllah, saying that. Because what's the difference? Say the word. Yaqeen. That's it. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us complete powerful Yaqeen. Amin Abil Alameen.